Good morning again. It's July Friday. <laughs> it's Friday, July the 5th. 8.55 now. Uh, did y'all like that little bit of humor? If you haven't seen it, go check it out. You might find it funny. You might not. Anyway, I thought it would be funny to uh, report on that. <laughs> anyway, this one's pretty serious. This one is. And, you know, this is about the submarine, the Russian submarine that went down or blew up. There was an explosion July 2nd, I believe. Uh, this was actually put out July the 3rd, and it's titled um, Black Goo, in quotes, Discovered Aboard the Doomed Russian Submarine. Now, this is pretty serious stuff here. This is in a report that was sent to me in my email. My email. I'm so behind on my email, or maybe just a whole bunch came in yesterday. I don't know. Or this morning even, overnight. Twisted Truth is the name of the publication. Uh, so I'm not sure how reliable it is. I, I've probably seen their stuff before. But anyway, let me read this to you. An unearthly, unearthly substance described by Russian M.O.D. I'm not sure what that stands for. MOD. I probably heard it and I don't remember. The MOD officials was described by them as gelatinous black protoplasm or black goo was discovered aboard the derelict remains of the low Sherrick submersible. A Russian deep sea research vessel gutted by a mysterious catastrophic fire that incinerated 14 crew members whose bodies were so badly burned, even their teeth melted in their heads. The Losharik's smoldering husk was unceremoniously towed to the Russian port of Sevastopol on the Black Sea. Now, there's some Russian names in here, so forgive me if I slaughter them. I'll do the best I can. The submersible, actually a nuclear-powered submarine, was widely believed to be a key asset of the Russian main directorate of deep sea research, a naval branch that conducts covert operations in all the world's oceans. Hmm. Shortly after the sub floundered on Monday and Vladimir Putin ordered Defense Minister Sergei Soigu to Sevastopol, the internet became awash with conspiracy theories, with some people irresponsibly claiming a conflict occurred between U.S. and Russian submarines in the North Atlantic. I thought it was irresponsible myself. I did not think they would <clears throat> Excuse me, I have to get um, comfortable here. All right. Yes, I'm wearing the same shirt. I wear the same shirt two days in a row if you haven't noticed already because I have to do my own laundry. All right. Where was I? This is very interesting indeed. All right. Sorry about this. I've lost my place. All right. Conspiracy theories. All right. The internet became awash with conspiracy theories, with some people irresponsibly claiming a conflict occurred between U.S. and Russian submarines in the North Atlantic. Now listen to this. This is very interesting indeed. They conflated Vice President Pence's aborted trip to New Hampshire 
the Secretary of State's plane unexpectedly taking to the air and Putin's emergency meeting with the Russian Security Council as a prelude to World War III. Well, I knew it wasn't. I just knew it in my spirit. But wait till you see why they rushed back to headquarters. Our sources, FSB, it may be something like our FBI, Agent Dmitry Osmosovich and Dr. Angelica Balabinov, who collectively bear the torch, once held by the late Stranikov Isaac Stepanovich, said no battle occurred and the submarine was lost while investigating, wait for it, reports of an unidentified flying object huh, that crashed in Russian territorial waters. Okay, we know that that could be anything, an unidentified flying object. That could be somebody's personal drone taking pictures. Okay, seriously. If they don't know what it is, it's unidentified. But with the black goo and the way their teeth melted inside, those men's bodies were cremated. I mean, that's not a regular explosion. All right. All right, where were we? Um... An unidentified flying object that crashed in Russian territorial waters. At approximately 10 p.m. Moscow time on Sunday, <coughs> a radar station on the Kamkatka Peninsula tracked an inbound bogey descending into the atmosphere at a 90 degree angle inbound bogey anyway descending into the atmosphere at a 90 degree angle at speeds exceeding Mach 10 that's really fast isn't it it dipped below radar coverage and struck the frigid waters of the Barren Sea. Now that's spelt. <coughs> Excuse me. I, I seem to be getting all congested again. B A R E N T S C. Barents C. At first, Russian Early Warning Systems, or the EWS, indicated a possible ICBM or meteor strike international intercontinental ballistic missile they thought it was a missile or a meteor strike but the ministry of defense quickly deduced that both speed and trajectory angle were inconsistent with either of those possibilities a 90 degree would that mean falling straight down 90 degrees to the water? I would think so. All right. Inconsistent with either of those possibilities. Per Agent Osmosovich, President Putin directed Soigu to muster a cadre of senior naval officers and extraterrestrial specialists. See, they're not afraid to talk about UFOs over there. They have actually have a team of people well I know we knew to yeah we just don't talk about it here in America from the Metzgoya extraterrestrial research outpost in the Ural Mountains to set sail for the suspected impact zone an unprecedented seven senior captains staffed the low shark 
That's uh, like a boat, a ship. With orders to, if possible, identify the sunken craft and determine the feasibility of retrieving or salvaging exotic components that might have survived the crash, any alien life forms on board, Osmochevich said, were to be exterminated as Putin disdains meddlesome ET invaders. Disdains ET meddlesome invaders. What is this, a joke? Twisted truth. It's not a joke. We know it happened. All right, let me continue. This is very interesting. We already know who the aliens are, right? Aliens are fallen angels. And Adar, Adar, see, it's Adar, she says, it's Adar, Adar said she had that dream or vision of the rapture and the cloud, which ended up being a bunch of UFOs at the same time. See, people in the past have said, when the bombs come down, we'll go up. Okay, let's get off of that. All right. All right, where is that word disdain? Right here. The Losharic's crushed depth is classified but it traveled at 250 meters below as the Barents is not very deep okay that's apparently not very deep because it crashed in our waters Putin did not fear another nation would violate our sovereignty he acted at once in case Foreign spy satellites spotted the wreckage. If we couldn't salvage, we were to destroy it. And this is precisely what happened, except we did not anticipate finding what was found, Osmosevich said. The Losharic sonar officer detected an acoustic echo return on the seafloor and initial, initial, initially mistook it for an American 688 Los Angeles class attack sub that could have been monitoring boomer traffic out of Pagliarni. But as the Lasheric drew closer to its quarry, he realized the signature did not match any submarine in the database. Excuse me. What is going on? A dive team exited the Losharic and saw a spaceship about 150 meters long a spaceship about 150 meters long and 30 meters circumference partly embedded in the sea floor the ship was metallic and smooth, glossy, with no apparent portholes or means of entry. Because so much of the craft was buried in rock, all seven captains 
unanimously agreed a retrieval operation would be dangerous, risky, and conspicuous even in territorial waters. To remain undetected, the Losharic floated its ELF antenna and transmitted ELF. Is that some kind of electronic L low or something frequency? Lower frequency ELF. I know uh, y'all are probably knowing what it is. Someone put it in the comments. What's ELF? To remain undetected, the low shark floated its ELF antenna and transmitted its assessment to command. Osmosevich said. The crew received only a one-word reply. Okay, and it's in Russian. And then it says, destruct. Although there was no guarantee explosives could destroy a vessel that survived impact from deep space, divers strategically affixed charges in hopes of imploding the ship. One noticed a small patch of what he described as black resin bonded to a section of the hull and scraped a sample for future analysis. With charges placed and divers safely back aboard, the submarine, I meant, with charges placed and divers safely back aboard, the submarine distanced itself from the alien ship and detonated the explosives. And by all accounts, the unknown craft imploded and was utterly obliterated, and the Losharic turned back to port. Okay, I think I said earlier I thought that was a ship. It was a submarine. What details next happened are murky, because even the surviving crew is unsure. What we do know is that somehow, some way, the sample escaped or was set free because it was discovered on the floor of the engine room. Oh, well, this is like <clears throat> science fiction movie stuff here. Whatever they scraped off of that thing was a living substance. That black goo. All right, it was discovered on the floor of the engine room as Losharic traveled home, submerged, Osmosevich said. The chief engineer who perished in the fire reportedly stumbled upon a pool of black vis viscous liquid that retreated from his approach. It was living. It was a living substance. It slithered into the reactor core and evidently triggered an explosion and subsequent fire that rapidly engulfed the Losharic. The fire suppression system failed and crew battled the blaze from compartment to compartment, sealing bulkheads while desperately battling the expanding inferno. A reactor spice spike, I'm sorry, a reactor spike nearly incinerated the ship, with the engineer barely managed to scram the reactor before deadly radiation killed what crew members still survived. 
still are probably radiated. They're going to die of radiation. Oh, my goodness. If this is true, this is un this is unbelievable. The officer in charge ordered an emergency blow, an act that violently ejects water from ballast tanks and rapidly propels a submarine to the surface. Doesn't that give you uh, the bends, what do they call it? And you have to be put in a, oh, never mind, it's a medical thing. A coded message was sent to the GRU headquarters and to Vladimir Putin, who devised a cover story. The submarine had a catastrophic accident during bathymetric measurements. Bathymetric. That's a word I have to look up. By then, the submarine was on reserve power, motionless in the water, its batteries destroyed or depleted, and Putin dispatched a tug to tow the sub to Sevastopol, Osmosevich said. President Putin, aware now that an alien life form infested the sub, ordered Defense Minister Soigu who has played an instrumental role in Putin's war on malevolent extraterrestrials. <sighs> this is a setup story. I, I just feel it in my heart. Let me continue. Putin's war on malevolent extraterrestrials to personally greet the low sheriff at port. 14 died including all seven captains. Their bodies burned beyond recognition. Five survivors were quarantined. The GRU placed one in isolation after he vomited ink-like excrement and his urine was black as coal. I don't know much beyond that, Osmosevich said. I know the submarine was scoured from bow to stern for the black goo, but I do not know if it was found at this time. Many comrades lost their lives, and Putin will not rest until he's uncovered the truth behind this horrific incident. All right. Knowing what we know about extraterrestrials, and the possibility of the great delusion involving alien an alien uh, rapture, uh, you know, like a false rapture, like aliens that the fallen angels will abduct people. They'll suck them up into their ships, okay? People will think they're being raptured. I don't know. It's stupid. Well, it's not stupid. It's people don't know better. They don't know Jesus. They don't know the Bible. They won't know. And, and it, it, some will be Christians. And you think, not you, not my people, this is if this is true this sounds unbelievable I mean do the leaders of all, all these countries Putin ought to know about the extraterrestrials being maybe they don't know they're fallen angels they should know but maybe they don't maybe only the Pope knows we know we're working with them in the deep underground military bases. Why wouldn't Putin know? Why wouldn't Putin know there are aliens? Is this story just a confounded bunch of lies? 
I'm beginning to think maybe it is. This is ridiculous. I mean, knowing that we're working with them underground, because I believe Phil Schneider, 100%, he was an engineer years back when they were working under out there in Denver, I think it was. He was working in a deep underground military base known as a DUMB, D-U-M-B. He went down the elevator, like if you saw uh, Independence Day, those that place was real, or those things like that are real. Where they get in an elevator, they go way down, get out, and there's there's a lab, okay, huge. And they all connect all over the country. That is true. Okay. You can do research on multiple dumbs. Where are the dumbs, D-U-M-B, in USA or whatever. Something like that. Some of them are for the elite to live in. When they think it's time, they'll go down there to live. Others are doing research right now with aliens, with fallen angels. They're doing experiments on people. Okay, so Phil Schneider, S-C-H-N-E-I-D-E-R. I'll find the video, I'll link it. It's got to be still on here unless YouTube scrubbed it. He got out of the elevator, opened, and there is a alien standing there, like one of the grays, with the big eyes and the little chin. Okay, and he had to unholster. It scared him, so he, he was going to shoot it. He tried to unholster his gun, which he did. He got it out. By the time he got it pointed at it, it shot a laser at his other hand had to be his other hand because he got a shot off and killed it and it sliced his hand right off it, it, he shows it well because he had he went to this conference and told people he ended up dead right after they don't want that stuff told well anyway I'll end this here this again is by just twisted truth now, I'm sure Snopes will already throw out that this is a, a lie. This is not true. Don't trust Snopes. They are backed by the government, and they, they refute anything the government does not want you to believe. They actually said chemtrails were a lie, that, that there was no such thing as chemtrails. Now, they may have had to change that now that was a few years back anyway things like that the government pays them to you know lie about stuff that's going on so people won't believe in it i'm going to end this here and i'm going to say uh i plead the blood of jesus over this video and um, oh, over my computer and over each and every one of you and all of your devices. Oh, my face is all marked up. <laughs> I just, anyway, never mind. I'm so tired. Can you tell? <laughs> it's okay. We got plenty of time to rest. When? How many more days? 13 and 5 is 18. So no, 12. Ha! 12 more days. We can rest all we want. We won't need to rest. We'll have glorified bodies. It'll be awesome. Oh, it'll be so awesome. <laughs> Come, Lord Jesus. And I plead the blood of Jesus over each and every one of you and all your devices. With that, I say bye for now. I'll talk to you later.